All right. It's good to see you. This is Monday of the second week of Advent, and we are in John chapter 20. Uh, super excited to have all of you here with us today. Uh, questions or comments, go ahead and, and you can post them on Facebook <clears throat> in the stream, or you can you can hit them in the myht.higherthings.org stream, which is the host site and where we would encourage you to go. Um, I hope that you and your family had a great um, weekend. I think that uh, um, I, I love the second Sunday in Advent because of all that it, it sort of captures. Um, in the traditional lectionary, it's, it's, it's uh, when you see everything going um, when everything goes crazy, when you think that it can't possibly continue, when, when everything looks like it's, 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 it's done and done and done, look up, straighten up, look up for your redemption draws near, which I think is just the best at, if you want to sort of sum up Advent, that's the, the sort of, a uh, a really way of, that I think of taking a look at it, um, straighten up. Uh, uh, lift up your heads, um, your redemption draws near. Um, ah, look, we got some folks there. Good to see you. I understand that the Dean um, had the wonderful gift of spending time with you on Friday, um, which is, is, is you know, Friday is the day that you get to spend on the Dean's list. And what a gift that is um, to have such a talented young pastor to uh, talk to you. Um, I have particularly cared for the blood and water flowing from his pierced side. And we could look at the biology, says the young pastor, but why? Um, it's all about Christ and his blood flowing um, for his church. So we had Jesus. Um, we've got the Son of God. We've got him buried. And now it's time for to see what happens in the gospel. On the first day of uh, the week, Maria Magdalene came to the tomb um, uh, early. Um, it's still dark. While it's still dark. Um, and saw that the stone had been moved out of the tomb, had been taken away from the tomb. So early in the morning on this, um, um, early in the morning, um, imagine the sadness. Imagine the insult of the thing that um, you you get this hate, terrible, terrible thing where Jesus is falsely accused, condemned, crucified, and dies. That he hangs before the people that love him, naked, cursed, is anyone who hangs on a tree. You have all of that... Um, And all of that, Emma, I'll tell you, surprise. Oh, we've got tons of surprises this week. It's birthday week. It's higher things is birthday week. Um, and we'll get to that in a bit. But uh, uh, just sort of take this in that, that you have all of that sadness and all of that feeling as if you'd been cheated of time with him, that the whole thing was was rigged, that the whole thing was, that this was this was just... This was just so very wrong. And then you can't tend to his body afterwards. You can't properly bury him. You, you have to run as fast as you can and throw him in the tomb. Just throw some spices in there and get out of there. And so early in the morning on the first day of the week, they go to, um, uh, they go to the tomb. She goes to the tomb. Um, she goes to the tomb early. And her her. Her idea is to, well, we can find out what her idea is. 
because she's not going there to sing, Jesus Christ is risen today, hallelujah. No, that's not what's going on. That's not what's going on. That's not what's happening here. And so she ran and came to Simon Peter and the and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and said to him, said to them, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb. And I do not know where they have laid him. And so she expected him to be in the tomb. She, she, she was going to, she's going to make it as right as she possibly could by taking care of the body. We want to do what's right for the people we love. That's what we want to do. We want to do what's right for the people we love. So we want to do what's right for the people we love. We want to do what's best for them. And, and she expected him to be there. She expected them to be there. She expected him to be there. And she was ready to tend to him. And he wasn't. And so she runs to tell Simon Peter and 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 John, that's the disciple whom Jesus loved, to tell him. And what she says tells you what she wanted to do. They've taken the Lord's body away, and I do not know where they've laid him. I can't fix this. I can't make it better. All right? I can't. can't make it better. I can't. He's not there. And so both of them run together. But the other disciple ran ahead quickly of Peter and came first to the tomb and um, he sort of stooped to look in and saw the, 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 the linen cloth lying there which um, although he didn't go in so he, he gets to the the CSI scene there's no taped off it's not taped off it should be taped off there appears to have been a crime but but he gets to the scene, and um, the body's not there. And he stoops to look at it, but he doesn't go in. He doesn't mess with what's going on. That's not the way he is. Hey, Emma. Well, Emma's on Facebook and my HT. Um, so he stoops down. But doesn't go in. But we know we know what's going to happen next. Simon Peter comes, following him, and he goes into the tomb. That is so, you 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 know you know this is Peter. He's not going to wait outside. He's going to bust in. He's going to bust in, and he does. I love it. They're 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 consistent to their personalities. I mean, because because this really happened. If this didn't happen, if this was just fake, then then there'd be discrepancies in their personality. They would they would get to the tomb and they'd be like, "He said he would raise from the dead." You know, and he so he must have raised from the dead. No, no. They get there. John doesn't go in, but Peter busts in. He sees the linen cloth lying there, along with the sundarion. Um, that is the um, the face cloth, which had been on Jesus' head, which had been on his head, um, not lying with uh, with the um, the linen cloth, um, but separate, wrapped up in its place. 
So uh, in a place by itself. So, so again, let's look at the evidence. Let's take a look at what they see. Because it's very, very important about what they see. Um, they see Jesus is gone. The linen cloth is separate from the face cloth. And the face cloth is folded. If this was a snatch and grab first, Peter would have been involved. John would have been too. But um, if this was a snatch and grab, if that's what was going on here, then this would be an absolute mess because there's not enough time. There's the guards, there's the stone, there's a limited amount of time to do what they need to do with, and the, the longer that they're messing around there, the more opportunity they are that we're get, they would get caught. And so the so you look at this situation, you're like, okay, the linen cloth lying there separate from the face cloth, which is folded. It appears that whoever, whatever happened, um, they just straightened up afterwards. Jesus made his bed after he rose from the dead, it appears. There was no rush in what was going on. None. The other disciple who reached the tomb first went in and episteusin he believed. Now, what did he believe? What did he believe? Hi, Pat. Good to see you. What did he believe? This is so important for you to, and I'm going to, I'm going to read the next verse and you can tell me what he believes. You tell me what, what, what John believes. For they had not yet known the scripture that it was necessary for him to anastasnai, to stand up, to, to resurrect out of the dead. And so they, just, they went again back, the disciples went again back to their homes. What did they believe? Exactly. Pastor Loftus. Oh, one of my heroes. Loftus pops up just to be one of my heroes. Um, they believe he's not there. They believe he's not there. That that is the that is the first meaning of what what they believe. They believed he wasn't there. The second thing they believe, um, very clearly, is they believe what she told them that they have taken the body of my Lord away, and I do not know where they've laid him. They believe. What she said, they believe the reason why she, and this is what is so important about this account, because if this was a made up story, what they believed, what they believed would have been, uh, we believe that he's raised from the dead. He said he was going to raise from the dead. And so he did raise from the dead. And that's what we believe. You know, if, if this was a constructed book, like the book of Mormon, like, like the, uh, like the Quran, then, 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 then they would be superheroes. But instead, we get to see their unbelief. Their utter and complete doubt and unbelief. We see it. It's right there. They don't believe. They believe he's been stolen. They believe what, they, what she told them. What's interesting is they believe what she told them and then later on don't believe her at all. But that's the way of unbelief. That's the way uh, That's the way this rolls. That's the way unbelief happens. And I overfilled my drink. That's the way of unbelief. But we get, we get the whole thing. We get the truth. We get what actually happened. And what, when, what, what, what actually happened is always messier. Okay? What actually happened is always messier. Um, I was teaching a Bible study one time and, and, and an investigator, a detective was in my class and he said, you know, pastor, um, I don't worry about um, the small differences in the, in the um, accounts. Hi, Christopher. Um, it's kind of chilly here too. 
I don't uh, really worry about the small differences in the account because when you have eyewitnesses, there are always slight differences in what they say. Because if everybody comes in and says the same exact thing, the same exact way, you know that it's rigged. It's too neat. And here, can what comfort? When I have doubts, what comfort? Even the disciples had doubts too. What comfort? And what comfort for me, I don't have to ask the question whether I would have been singing hymns at the tomb. Because I know I wouldn't have. Because the people who were on site weren't either. And so they just go back. Which is the way we can treat Easter. Just go back to our homes. Go back to our lives. Go back to the way things were. Go back to the, you know... You can't fight death, taxes, and God. You know, just go back to the way things were. And be unchanged by, by the resurrection. I mean, that's the way of sin and death. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Two plus two is four, and Jesus rose from the dead. You know, whatever. Um... But there's more. Mary stood um, at the tomb outside weeping. That's what she was doing. She was weeping. And as she wept, she stooped to look into the tomb. And she saw two angels in white sitting um, one at the head and one at the posen, the posen, the foot, where the body, the soma to Jesu, the body of Jesus had lain. So where the body had been, they she comes back. She, I'm sorry, she never leaves. They leave. She's there. She looks up and there's, there's two angels. One sitting where the head was and one sitting where the feet were. This agrees with the other accounts, whether it be one angel or two. Um, one that says, you know, why do you look, why do you seek the living amongst the dead? Um, you know, there seems to be angelic activity at the tomb on that first Easter morning. Now the angels don't, uh, the angels say to her, woman, why do you weeping? She says, they have taken my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. This is the second time she's said the same sentence. And you can imagine that each successive time that she says it, there's more... What's her weeping, her having doubts? I, I, I don't think there's any doubt, Christopher, ha, that... She's weeping because she does. She believes that they've taken his body away. There is no doubt that because dead people stay dead. That is the way of the universe. You live, you die. Dead people stay dead. That's the way it is. They don't raise from the dead. And he's missing. And therefore, somebody must have taken it. Because dead people don't just get up and walk off. And Jesus said to her, whoa, whoa, where did he come from? Oh, wait, no, 14. Having, having, um, having said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Now, how does she not know who he is? She knows him better than anyone else, probably. She knows what's up with him. And she has loved and cared for him. If anybody could pick him out of a lineup, she could. And all of a sudden, she can't recognize him. And no, no doubt, you could, you could be sitting next to Jesus on the subway and you would not recognize him unless he had revealed himself to you. I believe in the, that I cannot believe by my own reason or strength. But the Holy Spirit has called me by the gospel 
enlightened me with his gifts, he sanctified and kept me in the one true faith. In the same way he calls, gathers, enlightens, and sanctifies the whole Christian church on earth and keeps it with Jesus in the one true faith. That's it. So this is not only historically accurate, it is theologically accurate. She doesn't recognize, and what a shocker that is. What a shocker that is. That there he is, she doesn't see him, she doesn't know who he is, she doesn't recognize him. Woman, whom, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? Jesus said to her. He speaks to her, enlivening words from an enlivening God who is who has overcome death and hell for her. And she Sherlock Holmes is. She supposes her unbelief kept her from. Um, Terry Lynn, that is as good of an answer as as he didn't reveal himself to her. See, I think, all right, this is my, Terry Lynn, this is my opinion. And you, and people are welcome to disagree with me. And I'm okay with it. I'm a big boy, a big pastor. I can handle it. I think, I think, Whether or not her unbelief blinds her or he hasn't revealed himself to her. Um, I, I think his, I think you, you, he would have to be masking a smile. He would, there's no way that he loves her. He loves her. He loves her. Bro, he loves, he loves, um, he loves Mary, Mary and Martha. He, he loves, depending on whether you believe they're the same people. He loves um, Lazarus. He loves John. There's no way at this moment where he has overcome everything for them that there's not a bit, just a bit of a of of a Jacoby smile that he's masking when he's like, "Woman, who are you looking for? Who whom are you seeking? You know that that I've done this for you, and you don't even know I've done it for you, and it makes it all the more joyful. Oh, you're going to be so surprised when you know the surprise." Oh, you're going to be so happy when you know the truth that I have overcome death for you, that I have saved you. And so Terry Lynn, I, I usually focus on the fact that I can't imagine that he's not smiling. You know, there's not a little bit of a song in his heart as he sort of smiles. And, hey, who are you? Who are you looking for? Who are you seeking? And she like, and she, Sherlock combs him wrong that he's the gardener. And says the the third time, and I think that you need to understand that that there's a little bit of neck movement at this point. There's no way. This is the third time she said it. It's been a long weekend. It was a long, long, awful weekend. A long, awful weekend. And 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 this is the culmination of it. Tongue in cheek, Jesus, you got it. This is the culmination of it. It, it, it was wrong what happened on the cross. It was wrong what happened in the trial. It was wrong that he, he was crucified. It was wrong that she couldn't bury him properly. And now this is wrong. And nobody gets it. And she's all alone. Sir, if Lord, if you know where you if you know where they have laid him, if you know, if you've if you've carried him away, Epe, Epe, tell me where you 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 laid him, that I may go and fix this. I think that's Sandra. I think her neck moved. I, I I can't imagine that her neck did. Look, if you know where he is, if you took him, just just give him back to me, and I'll fix this. I can make this right. And no, Mar Mary, you no, Mary, you can't make this right, because it's more right than it would. It, it is it is universe changing right from now on. And all the evil that happened to him and all the things they did to him and all the bad, all of it has come to this wonderful moment where not only did he die, but he rose. 
And the one who rose is the one who died on Good Friday. And she and, and, and so with all of that sort of that pinned up sadness, she she engages him in a discussion and she says, You give me back the body. Give him to me. You know how wrong this is. And Jesus said to her, Miriam. And she struck face saw. So she turns and she says and she says to him in 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 Aramaic or, or in Aramaic she says to him in Hebrew Rabon which means teacher you did not know him until he called you by name you did not know who he was you didn't find him he found you you did not know him until he said your name at the water in the font at your baptism. He called you by name. I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Um, he called you by name. You are his. And you did not know him until he called you by name. And now he's called you by name and you can pick him out of any lineup. M Miriam and she she turns and she and she says to him Rabbi Me mu hapu haptu this is haptic uh haptic um and it's a present tense. And so the translation says, don't cling to me. Eh. I think it's probably better stop clinging to me. This is an action which has already began. So Jesus is like, he doesn't like, um, jump back. Don't touch me. No touchy. Now, it, it, that's not how this goes down. She. I mean, there is no way, no social distancing rules that are going to keep him from her, going to keep her from grabbing hold of him and grasping hold of him and saying, you're alive, you're mine, and I'm never going to let you go. Oh, what you did to me this week. Stop clinging to me. Stop touching me. She grasps hold of him and she would never let him go. And she would pin him like a balloon on the earth, like a helium balloon tied to on a string. You're never going anywhere. You're always going to be with me. This is the way it's going to be. Stop clinging to me. For I have not yet Anna Bebeke. I have not ascended, gone up. Anna, um, up, Bebeke. I mean, I have not gone up to the Father. Uh, but go and uh, go to my brothers and say to them, Anna Bino, I am going up to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Go tell them everything has changed. God is no longer somebody else's God. God is your God. God is no longer ang with, angry with you. He's your God. God is no longer somebody else's father. He's your father because of, the, because of my suffering and death. Go tell them that the universe has changed and everything is right again. God is now... Not just God, but he's your God. And God is not just my father, but he's your father too. And nothing's going to change that from now on because it rests on my death and resurrection. It hangs, it sits on, it's anchored to not you recognizing me, but me 
calling you by name and saving you. I can't be for you the same way I was before, so you got to let go of me. But then, go and be the first apostle. You go tell my brothers that, first, that they're my brothers, and second, that I'm, we have the same Father, the same God. What comfort. What unbelievable, unending, unstoppable, unlosable, unshakable, no sin can take it away, no mess up, no addiction can wreck this for you, comfort that God is now your God and your Father solely because of the suffering and death and resurrection of Jesus. He doesn't depend upon you. If you can't mess it up, you can't fumble it. In the LSU football game this week, somebody was so excited about scoring some true freshman that he flipped the ball to the referee before he even crossed the, the goal line. He started to try to, like, and, and, and it, it could have been an absolute college mess had they called it. But one of his friends ran up behind him, picked the ball up, and just sort of walked across the end zone just in case and, and rescued him from what could have been something that was totally different from just, you know, you know, remember the, the, the time in which you totally screwed up and didn't score a touchdown? To remember the time you you know you were so excited about scoring a touchdown, but I, I, I had your back. Can't mess this up. This is not losable. It doesn't rest on you. In Jesus, you must be saved. I must be saved. God is my Father. God is my God. all going to work out for good. And Mary Magdalene went and 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 angeled, she announced, she messengered to the disciples that I have seen the Lord and that he had said these things to her. No. Christopher, it's very obvious that she did not know that she, along with the disciples from about, I think it's verse, um, from earlier, that they did not yet know that Jesus was to raise from the dead. And and so she's looking for the dead body. She's going to do the altar guild stuff that she's given to do. And she's looking for the dead body, but there is no dead body at the tomb. Not this day. Not this day. All right, tomorrow we'll do uh, the rest of chapter... Um, 20. But I want to remind you that this is the birthday week of higher things. And so um, to celebrate our birthday with us, um, I want you to go to um, higherthings.org and hit that giving button um, and give today 20 years. We are almost adults. 20 years of serving young people and resourcing parents, pastors, and youth leaders in promoting and giving out that and passing on the faith to the next generation. Teaching kids that salvation is by grace alone, that is by Jesus alone, received by faith alone, from Scripture alone. That's the surprise, Emma. And the surprise is happy birthday, higher things. Happy birthday, higher things. And so do me a favor and go and give a gift to celebrate our birthday this week. The Lord's richest blessings be on you and your family. A blessed Advent time as Advent tide as you wait and watch for the coming of the Lord. Have a blessed day in the Lord. And I'll see you tomorrow.